Color or tonal clipping refers to color or tones in an image that have reached the extreme ends of the tonal range, causing loss of detail due to overexposure or underexposure. Identifying clip tones is important in image editing because it helps you to avoid loss of detail, especially in the highlights and the shadows. When doing adjustments like exposure, levels or curves, it can help you to determine how far you can push it before you start losing details that can no longer be restored. As long as I don't clip the colors with an adjustment, additional adjustments still can reuse or restore the detail. Like now, I can lower the exposure to minus 3.666 and it looks pretty messed up. But when I add a second exposure adjustment on top and set the exposure to plus 3.666, we get the original image back. As you can see, there is no difference when I turn them on and off. However, when I push the first exposure adjustment too far, let's say minus 10, the details or the color information is lost and even the second exposure can no longer retrieve the details back when I set the exposure to plus 10. Notice how we lost a lot of detail in the shadow area. It is definitely no longer the same image when we compare it with the starting image. In Affinity Photo, the develop persona has a clipping warning feature where the clipped area will be highlighted notifying us that we over-applied an adjustment. Let's first enable highlight clipping. This occurs when the brightest areas of an image, such as a bright skin, clouds or highly reflective surfaces, gets so overexposed that they become completely white with no detail. Because we turned on this highlight clipping warning, the overexposed areas are now shown in red. We can also enable the shadow clipping. This happens when the darkest areas of an image, such as the deep shadows or black objects, are underexposed to the point where they become pure black with no detail. These underexposed areas are shown in blue. The developed persona also has a clip tones option. I'm not 100% sure how this works, but I assume this shows areas where one or more color components are clipped or missing. This usually happens when there's a peak at the beginning or the end of the histogram for a specific color channel. For example, we can see this peak of red at the left side of the histogram, which corresponds with the yellows we see in the image. So if I would enable a curves adjustment and in the red channel adjust the curve to make the dark reds a tiny bit brighter, notice how most of the yellow warning is gone. We can also clearly see in the histogram that the red peak touching the left border of the histogram is gone. For demonstration purposes, let me switch to the blue channel and adjust the highlights. Notice how the yellow warning comes up the moment we start removing the blue from the histogram. So this clip tones warning could be very useful when modifying color channels separately. These warnings are great, however, they are only available in the develop persona, which is kind of a bummer. It would be great to have this in the photo persona too. Do not despair. By being creative, we can mimic these warnings in the photo persona. A viewer sent me a link to the Affinity Forum, where a user has mimicked them using a live procedural filter. Link to the post will be in the description. Let's have a look at them. I already created presets from the formulas provided in the post. A link to these presets will also be in the description. So let's apply the first preset. If I now add a curves adjustment and modify the curve, we can now see the clipped shadows in blue and the clipped highlights in red. Pretty awesome. Let me disable the curves adjustment and change the live procedural texture to use the second preset called clipping RGB. This is very similar to the tonal warning in the developer persona. It will show the color channel that gets clipped, 
In this case, the red channel is being clipped. We also saw this in the developer persona. When I enable the curves adjustment, notice what is happening. We have a lot of red values being clipped. The white areas are red, green and blue together being clipped. We also see some blue being clipped. When I open up the curves adjustment and modify the green channel, we can see that green is now also being shown as clipped. Let's now look at the last preset, the RGB black clipping. This is basically the same as the previous preset, but sometimes the warning colors can be difficult to see because they are blended in with the image. This preset makes the image completely black while the warnings keep their color. It is just a bit easier to the eyes in finding out the problem areas. For those who didn't know, the levels adjustment also has a built-in clipping warning. When you keep the Alt or Option key pressed while moving the sliders, it will show the highlight or the shadow clipping. Even though this is pretty awesome, it only works with the levels adjustment. By using these procedural texture layers, we can see the clipping for any adjustment we do. By the way, I also created an asset category which allows you to drag and drop these on the canvas. Link will also be in the description. Personally, I prefer these over the presets as they are a bit faster to apply. Before leaving you, here is a quick look at a practical case on using these warning layers. I will add a curves adjustment on top of the image below the warning group. In this curves adjustment, I'm going to lower the curve until I get a warning. Perfect. Let's add another curves adjustment, but this time use it to brighten the image until we get a warning. I'm going to push it as much as I can. Beautiful. We have now created a very contrasty image without losing any details. Pretty awesome. If you find it too much, you can group these two curves adjustment layers and lower the opacity of the group. I trust you enjoyed this video and discovered it to be engaging. I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the viewer who shared the link to the Affinity Forum post and, of course, an even more profound thank you to the creator of these formulas for their generosity in sharing them with the community. Thank you once more for tuning in and please remember to click those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Until the next video.